quickly. We can't just empty the hangers and then refill them right away or we'll never get ahead. That's good advice. I won't be taking it, but very good advice. It doesn't have to be that deep. I think, like, I used to think it had to be, like, so, so deep. It's just, like, a simple act of obedience. But I feel like most of the things that they ask me to do, they have a reason for, even if I think I could weasel my way around it. Did it crack when you were on the way over here? No, I don't think so. It was pouring. Miller was on the porch and it just cracked and his whole entire body ejected. Oh. He was like just sitting on the little stoop. Like, <laughs> and his whole body just ejected like into the house. I felt so bad for him. Oh. <laughs> no, I didn't hear any loud cracks. I heard lots of rumblings. We were at the pond today and it was cut short. Oh, the pond. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, welcome to, well, we're like super dressed down. It's like going to be a casual girl chat. Casual like, Tuesday. Sometimes the like, Q&A can be like, okay, let us inform you. I think today is more of just like, let's. Let's, Let's shoot the, the people, breeze. What do the people want to know? <laughs> yeah. So welcome. Do you want to give any life updates before we get started? I don't know. Life's been pretty mundane and boring, which is how I like it. Some random weekend trips. Jack's out for the summer. So lots of time at the pond, playing outside, working outside. How many eggs are you getting a day? Three-ish. Three I eggs think. a day? <laughs> yeah, from four chickens, so... Maybe the ones a rooster, I'm not quite sure. That adds up. Yeah. After a while. I think so. Some double yogurt, so that's exciting. Yeah. Oh my goodness. It's funny. Um, yeah, I would say we have been living like summer is just flying. I feel like every Monday I like, okay, can I get any projects done this week? Or is this just a week of surviving and getting ready for like the next family trip or whatever? And I feel like every other week is like we do nothing extra because we're prepared for camping or something yeah. like that. So I just have to be okay with that. Like, there's so many projects I want to get done, and they just have to happen in, like, yeah, you can't prioritize that stuff. It has to kind of happen in the cracks, and there's not been a lot of cracks lately. <laughs> anyway, let's get right into it. I feel like these Q&As always can get really long, yeah. so why don't you share your favorites, and then we'll get into it. My favorites, since it's summer, is my paddleboard. We, I know paddleboarding is, like, super mainstream now, and everyone does it, but we actually started three years ago, so I think it was three years ago. So I feel like we got on the bandwagon like a little bit ahead of everyone else. So I have that going for me. <laughs> I just love it. Like there's something therapeutic about it. We can take the boys with us. We like to go to the lake and do it. Or um, I like doing it down the river the best. Like what we did. Oh, that was so It's so fun because you like you don't have to worry about turning around. You just go with the flow. And then and you're paddle. done. You're done. <laughs> yeah. So I just love it. It's one of our, our favorite family activities. Yeah, that was fun camping with like all the cousins and stuff like I do you think a lot of families still do that I don't know I don't know like I feel like it's great, a pretty big the great grandma on down and everything yeah and my favorite I will try to link but it's gonna be subpar because the real deal you can get at like good store the Amish stores and that is a wooden drying rack they are not cheap but they're also not made cheaply either I feel like they're really good quality the ones actually I might be able to link the good store one they have a website they do have a website I don't know if they ship that big of an item or not but I have been loving mine I don't have a wash line and it's just really nice to throw have the kids throw their own like swimsuits on there their towels and like I don't is this bad I don't wash their swimsuit every single time I do if we go to the pond, but if oh, we would go to yeah. a pool, I probably wouldn't. Because I hear chlorine is pretty bad, but I was just like, swimsuits just take so much of a beating, and so I try to wash them as least as possible. Maybe what I should do is just like soak them in cold water. I can maybe rinse do them. that. Yeah. yeah, rinse them out. But um, yeah, I have my kids use that drying rack a lot. They do like the little tea towels and hang them on there for me, and I don't know. It's just like a really nice handy thing to throw out there. You wash your shoes or something, set them on there to dry, and I mine was a wedding present, and... I I don't know. I've got to come, come and gone in spurts of using it. And I feel like this summer I've been using it practically daily. So I'll link the subpar Amazon version. I mean, I'm assuming it's subpar. It's not Amish made. Yeah. So um, yeah, you can take a look at that for reference if you want. I got one as a wedding present too. And I use mine mostly in the winter. I put it in front of our pellet stove and put like towels and stuff on it. Yeah, it's great to like dry out like winter clothing and stuff too. Yeah. Like you don't want to put like those plastic gloves and stuff yeah. in the dryer all the time. You can just... Do your kids try to use it as a jungle gym if you're not watching? Oh, my word, no. But they play underneath it like it's a tent. Yeah. <laughs> oh, dear. No, they think because they'll all topple over yes. easily. Yes. Oh, man. Anyway, we put a Q&A box out on Instagram because we're like, it's been a while since we heard from you guys, and I love it for it to be interactive. We kind of try to interact through the comments and stuff, but 
there's nothing like a good q and I feel like it's really fun to like jump around from topic to topic and hit a bunch of different things. Yeah. So yeah, I guess you can t- see by the title some of the things we're going to hit, but I'll also try to do a timestamp down below as well. But I su- just suggest you be along for the ride, you know, pop, pop in your earbuds while you're doing laundry or whatever and be ready for anything listen for the through the whole thing yeah you never know what you're gonna miss <laughs> do Mennonites go on missions trips yes yes absolutely yes. I thought of a couple people um our aunt and uncle Jen and Tyler they served in Papua New Guinea for four years well, that's a lot more than a trip that's like right a life I mean not that a is life. A, life a term commitment. a term um my sister-in-law Janelle is currently in Thailand uh, working in, I think she's working with some women that are coming out of the red light district or like sex trafficking or supporting people that are working with them in some really dark places in Thailand. We go to Grenada or we did on our senior trip in high school. Many Mennonites dedicate their entire lives to missions, not just a couple years even, but like yeah, a lot know, of decades. Them, there's more and more that like come back, support themselves, make money and then go back again. Josh just had a friend he was talking to that was over in Nepal crazy things he saw over there was like steven no, no but i heard about nepal first from steven yeah but steven no. is another one that's... um but he said he would not want to ever get in a fight with a woman over there he said they are so strong over in Serious? nepal they carry like is it 100 or 150 pounds worth of bundle of sticks on either side of their head like all on their neck oh my, wow. and like they're just like it's crazy over there and they're like falling off of the sides of the mountains because they have to do their farming on the side of a mountain and everything it's just crazy crazy. but yeah I don't think we're as organized about it as like the Mormons I think there's a certain age where you go serve a mission for two years exactly or they have a whole system set up which is kind of cool too but no it's more of like God are you calling me somewhere where should I go type of thing and there's definitely a lot of like bible schools and like the water program and different things that are set up to give people a taste of like living Because obviously not everybody is cut out for it, you know. So it gives them like a taste for living in a foreign field. Um, There's a Bible college over in Thailand that you go to college and then you also take many missions trips out of the area, you know, and see where God is calling you. So yeah, I definitely think Mennonites are very mission-minded. Yes. A lot of dollars go into missions, that's for sure. I was going to say that too. I feel like not as many workers go into missions. Right, but the workers need support and there is millions of dollars going from businesses run by Mennonites that is going to third world countries to support mission work that is being done all over the world and all over the country. There's definitely a heart for it. Like every weekend, I feel like you could go to a different benefit auction for yeah. something. Yeah. So that's I, I love that part about our community. Yeah, for sure, we but. have workers in Haiti, which is one of the most. Well, a lot of those places, sadly, they're they've closed. Yeah, I just read Kidnapped in Haiti a couple months ago. I was glued to that book. It's huge, and I was like, this book is going to be so boring. It was not boring. Yeah. <laughs> It was very detailed, and it did get long, but, like, it was a really good book. So if you want to read about Mennonites and missions, that might be a good place to start. Yeah, there you go. And that was just a very recent event. Very crazy. I don't know if you heard, but they were held hostage. And, I mean, there's still some sketchy details left out because, like, the government was involved in different things, and they can't say it all, but, yeah, it's nuts. Crazy story. A baby was kidnapped with that group of, what, 17 people? I think so. Yeah, it's crazy. Yeah, crazy, crazy story. Okay, do you think a head covering gets you into heaven? <laughs> no. No. And do we need to elaborate? No. no. No, I don't think so. How do Mennonites view adoption? Um, I thought was it's wonderful, hard, and it's a blessing and a challenge. Yeah. I mean, you would be a little bit closer to that because um, you married someone who was yeah. adopted. So you get to... I've, I feel like knowing Eric has given me a different perspective on adoption to begin with. It made it more close to home and everything. Yeah. Um, it probably should be happening more than it is, but at the same so time, too. it is a very, very hard calling, but also very rewarding, I'm sure. And I feel like we should always be open to it, no yeah. matter who we are. Absolutely. I am so thankful for adoption. I'm thankful that Eric's adopted parents were willing to open their home, even although they already had eight kids. They said, sure, two kids need a home. We'll take them in. It's crazy. And I'm grateful for Eric's biological sister, who basically rescued them from an abusive situation and I feel like we owe her a lot no kidding yeah Yeah, no kidding how do you keep your wardrobe to a minimum I don't (laughs) I do donate or consign clothes that I'm not wearing but as far as like trying to do any sort of minimalism uh, if I see it I like it I buy it (laughs) 
I am trying to maybe pick more quality pieces and not so much fast fashion lately. That's just one thing I've personally been working on. But yeah, I don't have any sort of minimalistic system. <laughs> I will say um, for myself, one thing is you don't always have to feel guilty for like jumping on a trend or something if it's something that you know that you like. Like kind of keep an eye on what you wear all the time. And then when something comes you know like maybe you just are a sneaker girl you always like to wear sneakers and then like you see a sneaker trend that you really like and you know that if you buy it you will wear it and so that's fine I don't think you need to feel guilty always but if you're jumping on every single little trend like you're gonna hit it's gonna stick like what 20% of the time at the most so I think that's definitely not a way to go about it and then also you could try I've done this I like to keep a most like I never pair my clothing down too much just because of my work and different things like that and I just love clothes like there's no shame in that either I guess I mean love in a healthy way I would hope um but try a mini capsule wardrobe like go through your closet and shop and pick out like six outfits that kind of go together they're right for the season they fit you well they're in good condition and put them in a separate section in your closet and try only pulling from there for like the week maybe for church you know have something else and just see how that works and see how you like it and if you really seem to like it you might find a lot of pieces that you're just really willing to let go and minimalize and yeah then the key after that is to stop shopping stop yeah. buying so quickly we can't just empty the hangers and then refill them right away or we'll never get ahead that's good advice i won't be taking it but very good advice <laughs> <laughs> well i kind of loathe laundry so i don't know being the only girl in my household i feel like it gives me a license to I don't know get the pretty thing and just be a little bit extra in my wardrobe because if I had a little girl I know that like most of my efforts would be to clothing her and not really worried about myself but since I don't have that I feel like eh whatever <laughs> um I am more of a minimalist with my kids clothes that's for sure just because they grow out of them so quickly so I'd rather just have them have six eight pairs of clothing that they wear out before they go on to the next size but my sister and my other sister are absolute opposites. They get out the next size clothing and they have way too much stuff. And I just can't identify. I get out the next size of clothes for my kids and I have to go shopping because yeah. <laughs> I don't have everything. Any tips on modest dressing for the summer months? Ooh, I feel like I've made plenty of videos on I this. I feel like you have too. You can link some. Yeah, you maybe want. I should. Um, and remember, like, modesty is a spectrum. What I consider modest, some of you think scandalous. and Yeah, like we know, show our elbows. and Yeah, and some of you think that I'm frumpy probably but one of my favorite summer outfits is the amazon skirt that i'm pretty sure you've linked oh yeah and just a t-shirt also long flowy dresses are elegant and very cool because you got that breeze going on if you they don't work so great if you have a little one-year-old who's like hanging on your skirt yeah but if you stick to like cotton and linen breathable fabrics versus polyester or spandex that's also cooling and midi dresses whatever the fabric are really comfortable in the summer too yeah and i have learned like everybody says buy light colors for summertime but if you're gonna have to wear layering pieces under those light colors it is a mute point then it's like annoying so sometimes the black or the gray t-shirt is the better option because you're not wearing a light color that you have to layer underneath um i don't know just like kind of be smart about that and also i was gonna say with modesty i never heard this rule before but did you know the orthodox jews the women they're i think this is, this is a great guideline i think i'm gonna have to get my um my daughter to adopt this when she's a teenager but their line is no knees no elbows and no collarbone so that's really like, that's their yeah and so that's interesting that us mennonites would only follow one one of those things which, which we, would we would cover oh, our knees. knees but we don't cover our elbows or our collarbone which it's I like guess eastern is today eastern yeah would like, okay say that like i just never heard the cover... collarbone thing from really anybody in this area so i don't know hey it's a great suggestion yeah, we're both you're... following that today oh yes <laughs> why don't mennonites wear cape dresses anymore my answer would be Wait, first of all a cape dress is just like yes. a sewed dress with an extra piece of fabric over the front my dress my wedding dress was a cape dress mine too yeah and it's just like basically for extra modesty and like there's not fabric clinging two layers basically i guess yeah there are more than ever that do the weaverland conference church is growing exponentially mostly due to their birth rate <laughs> but you don't see them because they're absent from social media almost absent from the internet completely and you only hear from the ones who left and like me and megan like who are not no longer in that conservative environment so you you don't 
if you don't like live in Lancaster County, you probably don't see many people wearing cape dresses because you're not going to hear from them on the internet. But rest assured, there are very many people who still wear cape dresses. Yeah. What's your favorite thing about each other? Oh. <laughs> Do you need your notes? <laughs> um, I what did I say? Something about how you're like very yourself and like you don't worry. Like if you want to do it, you're going to do it. It's like guilty. I don't need other people's permission or like, and that's how I try to be. That's like what I preach all the time. I act like I'm that way, but it's often more of an act. And I feel like for you, which is great. Fake it till you make it, you know, but I feel like that's truly who you always were, even when we were younger. And it just took me more years to get into that. And so I always have looked at you as a role model for that. Um, Yeah. Just that you don't, don't let peer pressure succumb. Don't succumb to peer pressure and just be you. Yep. And it's, it's fine. <laughs> like if, even if you're into something that other people aren't or yeah, I don't know. I really appreciate that. There's a lot of things though. Like what else? I could have had a whole bunch. I don't know, but I get the confidence from my dad. Oh. Cause he, he doesn't <laughs> care at all what people think of him. Like he does what he wants to do. And if you don't like it, his favorite thing to say is like it or lump it. He's going <laughs> to do what he wants to do. And so uh, I think it just kind of rubbed yeah, off. Joelle's me. that way too. Yeah. For the most part, I think. Um, but yeah, I also, I feel like you're so good with words and you're so like, so that I think a lot of people have a lot going on up here and you just never know it cause they don't know how to express it, say it, teach it, write it. And you're like really good with words, whether you're like teaching Sunday school or writing an Instagram post or whatever. And I think that's like, you not only have a beautiful heart, but you know how to show it and share it and make the world better because of it, you know? Well, thank you. <laughs> Okay, now this is like Mickey Mouse. <laughs> no, Can we just skip you talking about me. No, my favorite thing about Megan is her drive and determination. If Megan wants to do something, she's gonna do it, and not only is she gonna do it, but she's gonna do it better than everyone else. She's gonna do it like amazing. She's gonna do such a good job. She's gonna give her all and make it hundred percent. And also, she's fun, always up for an adventure, and. I like people that are always ready to do the next crazy thing. And I feel like Megan is. And she's just an all-around fun person to be with. Oh, well, I love fun people. So I take that as a compliment. <laughs> well, it was intended to be. Okay, next. Are there any rules in your church that you would prefer not to follow? Yes. <laughs> okay, let me explain. There are some things that I would enjoy doing or wearing that I don't think are biblically wrong. However, I understand that a church needs to have guidelines guidelines and i follow them for the most part to the best of my ability and if some if, if the church asked me to do something that was against scripture then that would be a hard no but i feel like most of the things that they ask me to do they have a reason for even if i think i could weasel my way around it and maybe i would be right like maybe i maybe some of the rules they're not necessarily justified by scripture but they're there for a reason and they're not against scripture so there's no reason i can't follow them but yes there are some things that i would you know, if, if I was left to my own devices, I would enjoy doing or wearing. Okay. Yeah. I would say for myself, um, I do go to a church that gives you a lot of like personal agency. You can kind of decide for yourself about a lot of like attire things, which is also actually very tiring. Like you have to think things through for yourself every time. Okay. What do I personally think? Do I have a feeling from God or like a conviction? Um, talk to your husband. You know, it's, it's a little more tiring when you don't just have some rules that are already set there ready for you to go. So are you saying, saying that rules actually bring freedom? Oh, am I? <laughs> you know what? They give a lot of peace of mind. That is for sure. But we have to make sure that we're not taking false security in exactly. following rules because they don't, they don't save you. Um, but yeah, I would say there really isn't much that I... I like, I wonder if I had never been a Mennonite, how I would be. Cause I was always that girl that like changed in the bathroom stall and stuff. I didn't want anybody looking. Yeah. I don't know. It's just really interesting. You can't really separate the cart from the horse, I guess, however yeah. you say it. But, um, I would say for the most part, no, I mean, no, I like the mom bun and getting the hair out of yeah. my face yeah. and like, um, yeah. You know what? It's wonderful in the summertime. They don't have to be like, people have to walk around half naked and like, <laughs> oh, I'm so glad I don't have to do that. Yeah. What has been the best thing and the worst thing about starting this podcast? Oh, my. Um, probably the worst thing would be, like, it is extra work, um, and I don't have a ton of margin, and so it was, like, something I really thought about before we took on, but at the same time, I felt like it was something very worthwhile, and if I would need to sacrifice, I should sacrifice somewhere else, um, my time and everything, so that was a little bit hard, and I think, 
sometimes we get to topics that make me a little nervous. Like I get, my heart starts pounding a little bit. Like I'm like, I think I stand behind what I say a hundred percent, but at the same time, I only know what I know. And like, I've never had other perspectives. And so I think for the most part, I'm very like humble in my ignorance, knowing I only have to speak from my own experiences and everything. Um, but yeah, that cringy, like just like cringing feeling sometimes reading comments like, oh dear, are people going to be like taking me the right way? Yeah. Agreed. Um, Mm -hmm. but yeah everything else is the good part like I love setting up and I don't know we like snapchat back and forth about our outfits pick up topics we usually are like on snapchat back and forth yes and then like that's a good point and blah 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 a lot of times they're really raw though and we don't really like go through them too much but it's fun to like bounce ideas back and forth and like we have quite the working and friend relationship now yeah we sure do it's wonderful it's been a year right yeah a a little over a year I the, my favorite part is just everything like I love it so much I pretty much love everything about it and yes I get like that anxiety sometimes like oh my word did I say something wrong am I gonna say something wrong who's gonna hear this and take it the wrong way so it's definitely like a challenge for me um I hate the extra stress that it puts on Megan because I know she's busy enough already <laughs> um and also I feel like I have a there's a pressure to handle responsibly a platform that I didn't earn. Like here I am speaking to however many people that watch this. I didn't work for the followers. I didn't earn them. Megan kind of just handed me this little platform, this little space of real estate right here. I mean, I'm not here because of God. He kind of handed, I mean, there was a lot of hard work behind it all. But yeah, I mean, I don't know why. I don't know why you guys are here, but I'm so glad. (laughs) But I do want to steward that platform well. I want to not try to take advantage of it or use it for my own glory but to remember the reasons why I wanted to do it in the first place so which was to use my skills that God gave me as you know like speaking or teaching or speaking truth and to share my perspective and and essentially to just honor and glorify him and the minute I lose sight of that I should probably get out and the worst part (gasps) How I set up the camera and the angles are awful and it stretches yes. out to like 300 pounds. I bet if you guys had to meet me in real life, you'd be like, oh, she's actually not obese. <laughs> Honestly, guys, the last two videos, I don't know what was up with the camera. Maybe we're, maybe it looks like that again here. I don't know. But like it stretched us out. We were like on the very edge of the screen and we both looked like a good, they say, what, well, a camera adds 10 pounds. I would say it added 30 at well, least. Well, I don't know. I look at the videos. I'm like, do I actually look like that? <laughs> no. And I just feel like sitting is not my best way to present myself because I have such a short torso so when I sit true. like I just look squat like everything you need just, your legs involved. everything bulges around my I mean I am not gonna lie I have extra poundage around my middle because you know I've had kids and pregnancies but like it just like blobs right there and I just look like I a don't blob. know I but felt anyway, really mortified I was like sorry but it's too late now you know you know what I just tell myself it is what it is people are thinking about what you're saying not how you look and get over yourself yes that's exactly right I'm like <laughs> thank the lord we're not putting out a platform where we're trying to be like everything <laughs> yeah we're not Instagram models <laughs> can you explain how you are related again like as our family tree do we want to get into that again oh I think some people were confused but like it's not I was making it all weird and everything but it's just that our dads who are cousins married sisters who are our moms and so it sounds kind of weird but it's not yeah. at all like there's tons of people out there not tons but like i've heard already of a, a set of brothers marrying a set of sisters or whatever. yeah it's it happens like all nobody's the time. more related or anything it's just yeah it does happen it's just that like i'm related to both of your parents and both of my parents obviously. i did see somebody one time not mennonites or anything but there was identical twin girls that married brothers so it's like their kids are like practically copy paste yeah you know? Yeah. Um, but yeah, anyway, I don't think there's much more to say about it, no. but no. Anyway. I mean, we could draw a diagram Yeah, if you really whatever. want to. Let's just say our family tree is identical after grandparents. Yeah. And that's uh, basically the Mennonite community is smaller than it feels. Yes. Like after five generations, we're all oh, like so- 70th cousins, seventh cousins or Someone whatever. either messaged or commented and say like people talk about their family tree while we maybe have a family wreath. <laughs> Oh no, that's no. We're not. No, 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 no. <laughs> Anywho, real. good joke, good joke. Dealing with the worldly stigma of having a lot of children. I don't have a lot of children. I won't say you have a lot of children. The today. stigma that it's a good thing or a bad thing, or well, what? I'm not exactly. Sure a worldly what the stigma means like, oh, you have seven kids, you must be so harried or whatever. Right, or like it's not environmentally prudent to have 
many kids. I don't know if that's what they were talking about or not, Actually, but I have guys, heard listen, that. Listen, we're trying to infiltrate the government here. How yes. do you do that? We you have, have an ulterior children. Yes. <laughs> oh my word, that's a clip. Oh dear. I no. don't deal with that at all. If anything, I feel a perceived, is that how you say it? Perceived pressure perceived. from my community or my mom or like Mennonites. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> to have more children. So I would say I would feel the opposite. I don't really worry about what the world thinks too much yeah that's true we're kind of in our bubble i would say in our realm it's like eh, family size has shrunk like even among the mennonites i would say four five six kids is like the average mm-hmm. um and yeah people go more than that but it's not near as common as it used to be yeah um but yeah i also think you should never have 12 kids for the wrong reason either and i feel like there's people out there that like just speaking I don't know if I'm talking about anybody in particular, but I know like I saw already that like people's views when they get pregnant, like skyrocket on YouTube and stuff. So they're like supposedly cranking out kids left and right for that reason. And I would sure hope that's not true. Yeah, that's really I don't know. sick. But that would be a ridiculous reason. So yes, I do think that large families are something to be admired. I can't, I only have three kids, so I can't even imagine how it would be to have six, nine. Like I cannot imagine. Um, but yeah, I don't feel like we really deal with the stigma too much. No. Or we don't let it bother us anyway. I think that would be a question to ask someone that has at least six kids. Yeah. I do feel a little embarrassed, though, when I, like, not embarrassed, but, like, sheepish, when I, I'm, like, in the grocery store and, like, my kids are having a meltdown. And I feel like there's a lady ha- looking over at me thinking, well, you shouldn't have had three kids in four years, you know, mm-hmm. type of thing. But, I mean, boo-hoo to you. Yeah. <laughs> Best advice for hard days as a mom. You had a good one, didn't you? Yeah, I said, and I think I maybe got this from you, or we talked about it one time simply wash their faces <laughs> if they're dirty it just makes them so much easier to i don't want to say love because we love them with dirty faces but it makes them easier to enjoy or appreciate maybe and For it probably sure, makes sure. them feel better too oh i'm sure and like above the whole like pie in the sky advice like remember these days are so short and no we're they'll be big yeah. soon like let's get practical here yes absolutely <laughs> like one thing i think helps is just like it's fine if you give them a popsicle and they had one yesterday it's not gonna like hurt them in the long run you know give them the popsicle and sit on the porch and forget your to-do list and have one with them or whatever and that will be fine um yeah snacks lollipops bring out it if it's really rough sometimes you just need a little a little break and everybody's happy and smiling again whatever you got to do to get a little break they'll be okay or just put nap time earlier than you planned (laughs) yeah exactly or a little bit of screen time so you can go in your room and have a good cry. Oh. <laughs> no, whatever whatever works for you. What is the most expensive thing you've ever purchased, excluding homes and vehicles? Oh my goodness. This is a fun question. You guys should put down in the comments. I would love to hear what other people... Yeah. Because it is hard to think. I'm like, most of my big ticket items... Like, are they talking about, like, me personally? Like, Josh, you know, bought a truck or, like, what You said not vehicles. I was excluding things. anything Eric bought because that would get boring real quick because it would be <laughs> a long list of things. Like, when I think about the most frivolous thing I ever bought, it's probably my Smeg espresso machine, but that was also, like, 50% free because Josh used points and stuff. So I don't regret it at all, but I don't know. That was not even... I'm sure I... I mean, my, my computer was like over a thousand dollars, you know, stuff like that. But I don't business expenses. That's not like really personal expenses. Well, I was going to say my serger was over a thousand dollars too, I think. Yeah. And that was for business, but that was the biggest, most expensive thing that I ever purchased for pleasure. I would say my fitness watch, my espresso maker and my paddle board. Yeah. And none and of Eric that stuff bought is some of those things for me. But. Is, was your serger over a thousand bucks? Yeah. Yeah, my computer was too, but that's like business stuff. Yeah, it's, it's easily like, paid for itself, so. Yeah. Huh. I don't know. I probably nickel and dime myself to death more than I do big purchases, which is not, you know, like buy the pretty cup, buy, yeah, the, yeah, buy exactly. the 14th water bottle, you know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. I feel like convicted. Moving on. Moving on. Do you want to do the veiling? That's the last one left. The girl, one to girls. Oh, yeah. This is a question you um, we saw, and I get it all the time. I didn't like, realize you got it a lot. I rarely answer it because it's like, ugh, how do you answer it in a DM? But we can answer it here because we can actually talk about it. Okay. Well, the question is, when does a girl start veiling? Whenever she's ready or baptism? Is there a general age? My personal opinion. Well, by veiling, like covering your hair yes. with a veil. Yeah. So this is just my personal opinion. I would hold this very loosely. This is just things I've observed through the years or things I was taught. The Bible states that women need to cover their heads, not females or not girls. So 
I would say somewhere in between that time when girls transition from girl to woman, like somewhere in that time frame, sixth, seventh, eighth grade, um, I feel like she should be old enough to articulate why she is doing it. And old enough to, on the practical side, old enough to mostly do her own hair. She should be able to take responsibility of that herself. I think doing it just because mom does it, like that's normal and acceptable. It's normal for a girl to want to be like her mom. But I don't think that's a very good reason to do it. And it definitely shouldn't be the only reason that you do it. Yeah, no, for sure. I used to think though that you had to have this like special calling from God or like this real strong conviction thing. But like... Doing it out of a simple heart of obedience, like, I don't tell lies. I'm a Christian. I obey my parents. I'm a Christian. Yeah. I cover my head because when I read 1 Corinthians 11, I believe that's talking to me today. And so I cover my head. Like, it doesn't have to be that deep. I think, like, I used to think it had to be, like, so, so deep. It's just, like, a simple act of obedience. I know, like, the Muslims, it's, like, this promise thing between them and God alone and, like, different – it's, like, a different way of looking at it, I think. And my views have changed on it a little bit in, like, yeah, there's so many other signs – that we are Christians as well. I think that's just like one way, Mm -hmm. like one obedience issue, I would think. And there's definitely a blessing in it, a protection in it. Mm -hmm. And um, I think for Ivani, I mean, she hasn't asked about it or talked about it at all yet. Like, so it'll be a discussion that comes up probably many times before she actually wants to do it herself. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I feel like too, it kind of comes hand in hand with conviction and like becoming a Christian And just, like, the whole faith journey in general. So who knows when? I don't know. There's not really a rule in our churches Mm -mm. let you have personal agency. Decide for yourself. It's not, like, a uniform thing. Right. You know? So it is. It's more than a uniform. But I think it's a little bit less than sometimes we make it seem like some, like, holy ritual that's, like, like, I don't necessarily think you need to be 100% convicted. I think you can just read it and be like, I want to be obedient. Mm -hmm. And do it. But... Anyway, I know there's Christians out there that would look at that passage very differently. Love you too. Um, but yeah, if you haven't read 1 Corinthians 11, I encourage you to do so and see see what you think. Mm-hmm. So yeah. is that everything? That's everything. Wow. We kept it quick and speed. Not. <laughs> <laughs> what are we at? <laughs> For like 47 minutes. So. Oh, that's not too bad. I hope you guys enjoyed. Well, we'll cut it down a little bit. But yeah. yeah. Thank you guys so much for being here. And we'll see you in the next one. Bye. Bye.